Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron. Welcome to today's discussion. We got an uh, announcement the other day that uh, lead PoE game dev Chris Wilson is going to be on Bay Class. It should be sometime tomorrow depending on where you are in the world. And so I wanted to throw the question out uh, to you all in the community. If you were able, uh, if you all of a sudden got a ticket and an invitation, if you opened up your email or your Discord, or you got a text message today, and uh, you got a message that said, hey, you're going to be a, a guest uh, during this interview with Chris Wilson, and you get to ask one question, any one question you want to ask, and Chris Wilson's got to answer it, what would that one question B. So several of you have dropped comments down below. I'm going to go through some of these. I'm not going to go through all of them. CF Worthy says, how long until they, Grinding Gear Games, stop treating PoE like a child in constant need of correction and let the game stand on its own two feet? I want to say this uh, from the very get-go, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to tackle this one first. Um, when you're asking someone questions, you need to ask a question and not drive at a point right? There's the difference between asking a question and driving at a point. You can drive at a point by asking a question, but if you're driving at the point, then you've, you're kind of trying to make a point. You're not really seeking an answer to your question. So a question that's worded like this, I would just say this CF worthy, and I, I thank you for asking this sort of question because it allows us to have this sort of discussion. When you're asking a question, if you genuinely want an answer to it, then you want to ask a rather narrow question. It doesn't have to be a yes or no question, but you want to ask a, a, a narrow question that's understandable. It's going to be pretty easy for anybody, regardless of their level of, of professional public relations training or public speaking training, to be able to walk around this question. You can simply respond to this question by saying, well, I think what you mean is something like this. Whenever you allow an interviewee to respond to your question as an interviewer with, well, I'm going to interpret your question this way, chances are they're actually missing the point of your question. Um, and, and that's not even saying they're trying to be nefarious and, and maybe intentionally misunderstanding your question or intentionally reframing your question. So you want to be really pointed. It's a difficult thing to ask um, strong questions that will lead to strong responses or getting the response that you want. Like it, with your question, what are the sorts of responses that you could get? Chris could say, uh, well, we're, we're going to uh, wait exactly two months. And in two months with 316, we're going to let the game stand on its own two feet. Or the response, again, like I said, could be, well, we're, we're trying to do that. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And thankfully, through your feedback as a community, we're going to aim to accomplish just that. Like you can give throwaway responses to to leading questions that are trying to drive a point more than actually get a genuine response out of somebody. Frog says, uh, he breaks the rules right away and he says, here's two questions. So he says, is there an internal roadmap listing particular changes needed for the transition from PoE1 into PoE2? How do they plan to introduce any particular changes in light of the community, uh, in light of how the community has perceived the most recent changes with 315? I think that's... Um, the question to ask, right? Is there some kind of development roadmap? Is there any sort of intrinsic vision that Grinding Gear Games, that's a word that gets tossed around a lot during this patch cycle, but essentially, is there a stated and communicated um, goal for merging or for getting the game of PoE 1 to be where we want it to be with 4.0 or PoE 2? In other words, we're at point A on our data sheet, and we want to get to point uh, D. Do we have B and C planned out for how we're going to get from A to B to C to D? Do we know how we're going to accomplish that? My sense is, is that the answer to that sort of question would be yes, and that we're only privy to that as a community as GGG is, is feeling uh, you know, pr particularly gracious towards us and uh, giving us answers to that. The second question that um, Frog brings up is, the current influence system involves very long-term goals and gear progression, in particular when it comes to double influence items and Maven orbs. However, it also brings significant power creep. What will the state of influence items be in PoE2? I just want to say this on this note. Um, they did say with the announcement on the forum thread regarding, regarding Chris appearing on this one particular podcast, he's not going to answer technical, detailed um, mechanics and balancing questions. They did make that very clear. I want to make that very clear to us as a community that regardless of um, however things go on the podcast or whatever you're feeling like as, as Chris is responding, 
Uh, Chris has not promised to come in and give us numbers or balance numbers or mechanical issues. And so on the one hand, we might feel um, a bit uh, undersold in that regard. We might feel like um, we've got mechanical questions that need to be answered or that should be answered. And that's fair. That's fair for us to feel as a community. But that's not what GGG is, is, is promising or is um, hoping to deliver on with this particular conversation. They're hoping not to get into the weeds, as it were. They want to do a bigger overall um, overarching discussion. So that's just something to be aware of. There's some good mechanical questions in here. I've got good mechanical questions, but GGG has already said in the announcement, basically, hey, we're not taking those on. So it'll be interesting to see if Chris and to what level Chris does interact with specific instances and specific mechanics and specific, um, even specific uh, examples of player power creep. Like that seems to be a pretty big overarching scoping discussion point. But in discussing the big overarching point, like sometimes you need to get into the nitty gritty and influence items are certainly a part of the nitty gritty. So it'll be interesting to see what is uh, what is avoided because it's too mechanical intensive, it's too detailed, and what is actually dove into and what is actually discussed. Okay, let's get to a couple more of these. Here says, when and how will timers be removed? As I always played slow and now zooming, uh, but now doing less damage, I'm even slower with less defenses. I want to have the opportunity, if needed, to spend 20 minutes clearing a map, but not have to. Okay, so... This is a question that's coming up all over the place, so I'm really glad that you asked it. A lot of players are bringing up the fact that a lot of different league mechanics have got timers associated with them, whether it's Alva, whether it's Breach, whether it's even Abyss, um, even Harbinger. There's there's just a lot of different um, mechanics that have got some kind of timer. Even Delve, I was uh, uh, observing a discussion the other day where folks were saying, well, Delve really isn't a timed encounter. And on the one hand, no, it's not. Uh, but on the other hand, it kind of is. It's a slower timed encounter, but you actually have to move with the cart. If you don't move with the cart, you're left in the darkness. So while that's a slower gameplay, like you can be behind the cart and the cart slows down, it's still timed. It still forces you to move at some level of speed, right? It, it That's intrinsic um, to the encounter as you move along with the cart. You don't have to be in front of the cart, but even if you're behind the cart, the cart still leaves you and you lose out on light radius. So it's interesting um, that so many players are bringing up timers, timed encounters, and I think this is a good question. I think this is something that is like a big overall arching question. I think in the nitty gritty of it, Chris could could say, well, um, you know, we don't have any specific plans or I can't tell you about specific things. But I think in the overarching scope of things, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect that Chris would respond to something like this or, or a rep from Grinding Gear Games would respond to something like this to say, you know what, over the last several years, we've included a lot of different timers and timer-based gameplay. Our goal for it is this, yada, yada, yada. Here's our goal for it. Here's what we've realized players like and don't like about it. Here's how it fits in with our vision for the game moving, moving forward. And here's how it doesn't fit in and blah, 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 right? So I could see a legitimate uh, answer that's, that's pretty thoughtful that's given to this without getting into too much of the nitty gritty. Joseph says, can we get rid of uh, all of these uh, crafting systems? They are clearly not doing what you want or what the players want and go back to a traditional loot drop based system. You could even use your well rolled system that you added uh, them pretty much ignored and removed. Okay. So Joseph, here's the good news. Um, the added loot, the smart loot system, the smart loot system that GGG has been promoting and discussing for the last couple of years, uh, that seems to be tied with 4.0 and, and PoE2. It seems to be something that Grinding Gear Games is aware of. It's been things that they've communicated about in the past. It would be interesting to see, in light of this particular discussion, if Chris doubles down on that and says, yep, we're, we're still moving towards that, and improving loot and, and identifying rares and actually finding good rares, that's something that we're aiming to accomplish prior to PoE2 uh, and is coming in upcoming releases. It could be uh, that that's something that's teased for the 316 uh, expansion or the 316 league, um, which we have also heard in uh, in relationship to the announcement of Chris going on this podcast, that, uh, that indeed we may see some teases about 316. Now, I think this is basically the earliest point in any life cycle of any previous league that we would get hints and hype for the next league. There's a whole discussion to talk about on that, why GGG would be already giving us hype for 316. That's kind of interesting. But all that is to say, I think this is a good 
question. And while it's particular in its mechanics and somebody could simply dodge it and, and simply say, look, that's a really good question. It's a detail oriented question. We're not going to get to it right now. I also think it's a large enough scope or big enough picture question to say, look, there's all of these different things in POE that are potentially obstacles to player retention, to players having fun, to player engagement, and to developers being able to develop what they want. If, if, if loot is primarily a um, obstacle to all of those good things, then whether you're a developer or whether you're a player, whether you're a, a player who wants to go zoom zoom or slow or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a large enough topic that um, it would it might be tough to wiggle out of just to say, oh, well, that's a mechanical thing and that's kind of a smaller thing that we're not going to talk about today. So if GGG is really working um, and continually working and is ready to share that they're working, on uh, improving the loot drops, then I think now would be a great time to actually uh, kind of tease that out and maybe announce that and say, hey, that's that's coming. We're, we're continuing to improve things. Remember with 315, there was a, a small line in the patch notes that there was going to be improved loot dropping off of um, particular different instances, encounters, and bosses, and fights. And while a lot of us could attest that we haven't necessarily experienced that in 315, it's at least something Grinding Gear Games was aiming to communicate. Like, hey, we are trying to improve this particular scenario. Maybe they're failing at it, but uh, that's something that they are communicating about as recently as 315. Anyway, I would love to read your comments down below. If you got to ask Chris one question, right, one question to the lead developer of Path of Exile, who's been with Path of Exile since its inception, what is the one question that you would ask him, keeping in mind that he's probably not going to answer like in-depth mechanical stuff and also that he's going to probably respond with stuff that's going on right now in the big picture of things. So if you ask too big of a picture uh, question, like maybe like, hey, when are we getting an axe redesign or why do we have to keep playing through the axe? I think those are good questions. I just don't think Chris is, would ever respond to them in this environment. I don't think it's a hot enough topic right now. And to be fair to the question um, that many players ask every single league, why do we need to re-roll every single league? I think Grinding Gear Games is trying to do something about that. And it's called Path of Exile 2 or 4.0. It's going to give us two different campaigns. Like that's their answer to the question is not that they're going to give us an endless delve mode to level up in or that they're going to give us an ability to simply jump into maps with a character at level 70. I, I, I just think that's that's their approach. Basically. Try to remember as we're enjoying and reacting and responding uh, to Chris's interview and interactions on Bay Class that there's not many other game development leaders or corporate CEO uh, sort of figures or game devs who are willing to go on a fan-made podcast to answer questions about their game. That's pretty cool in and of itself. So regardless of how skeptical we are or cynical we are with how much fun we're having in 315 or how little fun we're having in 315, let's let's try to remember that in the midst of all of our reactions and responses uh, and discussions and comments moving forward. Anyway, thanks once again so much for joining us for today's discussion. And I hope today is the day a Mirror of Calandra drops for you if you're still playing 315 or if you're playing some other game that I hope whatever is a Mirror equivalent drops for you.